Good morning everyone, we are going to Toulouse and for that we are taking the train because we are not allowed to drive there without a, I mean it's a low emission zone and we do not have the sticker, we didn't order it so we are going to go to the train station of the village and um, yeah from there we take the train to to lose the station of Montabio. So we have arrived to Toulouse Matabio, that's the name of the station. Now we're gonna walk to the center, it's 7 a.m. so it might be pretty quiet. First impressions of Toulouse, the Montebio station looks impressive and hotel prices are quite high. But it does look like a beautiful city with well-preserved buildings and a kind of unique flair. According to Wikipedia, the city's unique architecture made of pinkish terracotta bricks has earned Toulouse the nickname La Ville Rose, the pink city. We have arrived to the capital, the Toulouse. You can see here how it looks. It hosts the theater over there, uh, over there. And then, yeah, the town hall. These eight columns that you see here, they used to represent the eight districts of Toulouse that existed in the past when it was built. There you can see the letters a bit better, RF, République Française, and the eight columns, each of them representing a consul or a capital that would represent a district of Toulouse. heads that you see over here they are meant to represent Greek gods and we are on the street of the golden apple Yoshi has not been sitting still while we were away. Apparently he opened a restaurant in here in Toulouse. And now we're here at the Museum of the Augustin. 
This building used to be a convent of Augustinian monks, hence the name of the museum. The building is mainly Gothic, with some Renaissance features such as a small cloister added in the 17th century. During the French Revolution, the convent became a national property and was turned first into stables and some time later into a museum. And here we have arrived to the Basilica Notre Dame de Notre Dame la Dorade. So Our Lady the Golden One. Next to the Garonne River we can find the Notre Dame de la Dorade, a basilica that was built in the 5th century on the remains of an ancient temple. Its decorations commonly consist of mosaics with a golden leaf, hence the name of La Dorade. We have arrived at St. Stephen's Cathedral. Another religious monument originally from the 5th century, the Cathedral of Saint Etienne, or St. Stephen in English, was built in its current form in the 13th century and combines the massive, powerful style of the Southern Gothic with the sleek, luminous style of the Northern Gothic. Some decorations and features that deserve being mentioned are the richly sculpted headstones, the Baroque altarpiece, the grills and the ensemble of stained glass windows. Chapels are decorated with three tables and are worth checking out too. So that was the cathedral. I like we personally found it less uh, 
impressive than I'll be. Yeah, personally. Um, but yeah. It's still quite big and had a lot of... Had several paintings. Did look nice inside. But Albi was really impressive. We are at Galerie Lafayette. We went to the up, to the upper floor, uh, to the highest floor, where there's a terrace from the restaurant, and like that you can get a view from Toulouse. I believe that in the background is the last cathedral that we need to check out. Yeah. We just come from the Galerie Lafayette, from the restaurant where we had a coffee. Uh, because we wanted to check out the terrace from the terrace you can see all of Toulouse and um, yeah they do not let us they do not let us cross the street let's see yeah it was uh, very beautiful the view and the coffee was expensive for France 250 but still cheaper than in Germany and the Netherlands. And we are here at the Couvent de Jacobin. The Jacobins Convent is a secret jewel of medieval architecture. It is a large brick building from the 13th century and its architecture inspired the development of the southern Gothic style. It consists of a double nave because the friars were separated from the congregation. Now it is not a convent anymore but rather a sort of museum. Though it has been deconsecrated, the inside still displays many interesting things, especially the relics from the Dominican monk Thomas Aquinas, whose philosophical ideas about faith influenced the doctrine of Catharism and presented a threat to the Catholic Church. So we just come from the Couvent de Jacobin and now we are walking to the Basilique de saint Cernin, uh, which is the third church or fourth church that we are visiting and uh, yeah I mean for now the churches in Albi so from yesterday they looked a bit better but um, now let's see, let's look at the last church.
Well, and this is part of the University of Toulouse. This building here. And here we are at the Basilique de saint Cernan. The saint Cernin Basilica was erected between the 11th and 14th centuries in honor of Saint Saturnin, who was the first bishop of the city. Saint Cernin is the largest Romanesque building in Europe, and the church is notable for the quality of its construction. The bell tower, standing over the transept crossing, really stands out visually. It has five floors and a spire. The church is decorated with small chapels on both sides. These display statues of prominent church leaders and saints. You can still see some old Romanesque paintings on some walls. The crypt is accessible and free of charge to visit. Here Saint Saturnin was buried and you can admire the different relics from the past that are in the glass vitrines. We just come from the inside of the Basilica of San Sernan and uh, it was more impressive than the other churches in Toulouse. We are pleasantly surprised and uh, also that everything was free, like free entrance and uh, you can just visit everything from the outside to the crypt so completely everything for free which we find very remarkable Looking for a place to have lunch, we found this, Le Chan, because the other place we wanted to go to, which is a family restaurant, restaurant that already closed down. Uh, so we might go inside here and eat. So we just come from lunch from that restaurant and uh, the food was very good. They also listened to us. Uh, we said we wanted well cooked the meat because we don't like it raw. Of course it's healthier when it's raw inside but 
um, I don't know I I am not used to that yet I I don't find it tasty and uh, indeed the meat came well cooked and everything was delicious it was like eating at a five-star restaurant uh, in terms of gastronomy in Germany like we are not used to that in Germany and the Netherlands to eat that well and as you can see it was 30 euros and 40 cents uh, the tea that we took was 3 euros per tea I think that made up a big part yeah now we are going to the Japanese garden and uh, we might have a snack somewhere as a dessert and then it's already almost four and we need to go back to the airbnb but we really enjoyed i mean toulouse was surprisingly a great place to be our dessert we're gonna eat it here at the japanese park in toulouse Looks like this, it's very quiet, beautiful, many different trees and plants and the sound of the birds in the background, so very relaxing. This is the filling, it's also chocolate and it's delicious, it's very subtle taste, it's not very sweet and you can taste all of the ingredients, it's really magnificent. And this is the flan. It looks quite good. How does it taste? This is the custard. With a lot of egg, I suppose. And cream. Cream, yeah. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> Better than other ones you've had? yes wow so this is the best one i think the second best one second second best one okay the best one was the first one in the on that national road yes the bakery in that french village uh from the video of sal yes yeah okay yeah that was a very good bakery yeah so we are now going to the train station. First, we're gonna make a stop to, um, because nature is calling us. But um, yeah, we have 40 minutes to go to the station. It's 30 minutes away, so it's a bit, um, yeah, it's gonna be a bit tight, but I think we'll be okay. We are at the station now we're gonna look uh, at the platform where our train departs yeah and go home have arrived to Diopantal and now we are gonna walk to the Airbnb it's a double yolk is it a double yolk it's a double yolk wow I've never seen that either it's mutated or it's from a good farm I think the second choice, right? The second option is, yeah, uh, like we got them for free from Nuno, from the host. 
as the Portuguese Airbnb. So if you're watching this, Nunos, thank you for the eggs, they are amazing. And uh, yeah, we are gonna have again a French Portuguese Spanish dinner, maybe also with some German touch. No, I don't think so. Thank God. I mean, joking, but uh, yeah, uh, West European meal. And one thing that we've learned while dining here in France or having lunch here in France at restaurants is that you don't say what, like when they ask you, um, do you want a dessert? And you want to say, no, thanks, I'm full. You don't say, no, merci, je suis plein. You would say, like, I had uh, an interesting, a funny moment, uh, because it's not word by word translation. I am full, je suis plein. No, it's more like, c'est bien, ou uh, c'est bon, c'est tout. Yeah, I think c'est bon, not c'est bien. C'est bien would be like, yeah, cool, give me a dessert. C'est bon. It's more like it was good, it was good food, so I don't need any more. Uh, or j'ai trop mangé, j'ai assez mangé, uh, j'ai bien mangé. So there are many different ways, but um, je suis plein. In France, it's too, it's too vulgar somehow. So, um, yeah, we've come to the end of this vlog as well. Um, I'm going to read a bit of this book of the um, Gallic, Gallians. Uh, yeah, Asterix and Obelis, the, those tribes, those kind of tribes. So I'm going to read about these uh, French tribes to my wife so that she falls asleep and me with her of course and yeah not much more uh, merci pour avoir regardé cette vidéo et bon on se voit demain bonne nuit